imagine what Abraham's friends would have said to him at 100 years of age and he was believing for a child. They would have said, Abraham, Sarah, you've missed it. You know, she was, what, 190. And it's like, oh, look, these guys are still believing for a child. So it looked in the natural like nothing had shifted, looked in the natural, nothing had changed, looked in the natural, wasn't going to happen, particularly by that age, year in and year out, year in and year out, year in and year out, year in and year out. There was still no sign until they reached a ripe old age, you know, in the natural, so to speak. I mean, 100 is very young these days. But it was like the, the Lord came through. So don't let the devil and people rob you of your healing because it doesn't look at the moment. The moment hands are laid on you, the healing power of God flows through your body. You know, he has already healed us. We're just possessing our possessions. So I'm so glad in my life I actually don't look to see what's going on in the natural. The natural is full of limitations. The, you know, the body is a part of the, the natural. You've got to speak the supernatural power of God into your body, resurrection life into your body. Doesn't matter what things look or seem like. Everyone goes, oh, look, it doesn't seem like anything's happening. Well, what realm are you actually living in? You live in the spirit realm, there's a whole pile of things that are happening. That's the way it is with the Lord. What he starts, he will finish. He, he takes great pleasure, as Ash was saying this morning, using the least and the small and almost, it says in the Greek, the non-existent thing. And he turns it around, his anointing gets on it and bang, they last through the famine with just a little bit of oil and a little tiny cake. See, God does things differently. We want like the massive pantry full of cakes and full of oil before we can actually believe. No, no, just believe for the little Believe that your hands were laid on you. Believe for the 30, then the 60, then the 100 fold. The Lord is working all the time. You know, and we're going to share a little bit about that today. So I'm glad that Abraham didn't listen to his mates, and I'm glad that Abraham didn't give up. Imagine, can you imagine when he was 99, and all of a sudden he was going to click over to 100, and at 99 he said, okay, Sarah, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Just one more year. <laughs> And it clicked over to 100, and there you go. They had the child. Never give up on the Lord. Never give up on what God has promised you. He is able to perform. You know, and I am like Abraham in a sense. I am fully persuaded. I've always been fully persuaded all my life that when things didn't look like it, when the chips were down in the natural, so to speak, God always comes shining through. He is the one that has already given us a victory already. It's ours. See, I cut my teeth on the word of faith in the early days. So you can't take that away from me. I don't care what things look like. I have never gone by sight. The just shall live by faith. If you're actually in faith, you'll be living according to what the word of the Lord is saying, what the spirit realm is saying. And uh, there's a ma vast, a massive, vast supply in the realm of the spirit realm, to, let me tell you. So you guys, you know, I, I'm fully persuaded that when hands were laid on you today, bang, that's your answer. Amen. You are the healed. Yeah. And healing is going to continue to work its way in your body. Amen. As you take communion, as you thank the Lord for your healing, you know, it's like you are the healed. I don't care what it looks like. You are healed. You know, we go with the Word. Then all of a sudden the Word will take place in your life. Uh, that's actually how I do live my life over all these years. Uh, you know, I've always gone the Word's way. I've never gone any other way except for what the Word of God says about my life, period. So it's, it's really great. So I'm seeing all kinds of things in my spirit that God's doing this year. And you know which way I'm going to walk? According to the Lord. See, I, I have in my heart, you know, I just, I was saying to some people even before 2024 came, there's something exciting about 2024. There's something on the inside of me that I cannot articulate or put into words that I feel that the Lord is actually doing around the world. Not only here, but around the world. There's something uh, in the realm of the Spirit that as we continue to pray and continue to focus on the Lord, He's going to show us some things this year. I have more confidence. I'm more content. I'm more at peace in the Lord than what I have ever been. I would say almost all my Christian life, times 100 for this year. I don't know what, it's just, it's just been a shift, a tangible shift 
maybe it's more established in the gospel of grace. Maybe it's, uh, you know, it could be all kinds of different things. But I feel like, you know, in the book of Haggai, where it talks about how, you know, the Lord stirred up their spirit, which in the Hebrew word is or, which is also he awakens our ear to hear. He awakened the prophet's ear to hear what the Lord is saying. And I feel a lot of what's going on, God's preparation, laying the, like a bit like a home on the farm, that we would plow up the fallow ground and all of a sudden the seed and the rain would fall and what was sown would begin to grow. It doesn't look like it. Sometimes you look out there and you think, well, the rain's actually going to come. Yes, they've been coming in the natural long enough and they're here in the spirit also. Thanks, guys. That's awesome. Just encouraging you, you know, you just be relentless in the Lord because you're not trying to wor work the Word. The Word already does work. You're at rest in it, but you're also tenacious in the things of the Lord. You know, it's not like, oh, well, this Word's going to work. No, it's actually like, it's sort of like you've got that energy because you've got the fire, the Spirit of God's Word coming through you. His Word is Spirit and His Word is life. So it's really fantastic. Thanks, guys. Good job. I love the little one coming up for prayer. He stands there and he's going, like, so that I wouldn't miss out, like, me, me, and I'm <laughs> pointing to himself. No, you're not going to miss out. <laughs> he's just so, yeah. It's like their spirit is so alive to the Lord, isn't it? And up they come, and you just see the miracle working God, you know, taking place in their life. You know, just because something is like, bang, immediately, doesn't mean to say the Lord hasn't actually worked. So you've got to operate in the realm of the Spirit. You work with the, with the way of the Lord, with the rhythm of His grace. In other words, it's already happened. You're just jumping on board, and yes, you're just getting a bit of a boost through prayer, and yes, you're just walking with what God has already done and already said in His Word. So it's very, very exciting. Well, here we go. Father, we thank you for an amazing breakthrough day to day. This is the day. This is the day if we're going to receive, this is going to be the day. Because we are receivers. Believers are receivers. We believe in the Lord, what He's going to do. I just feel this year there's some things that are actually being ignited on the inside of us. Uh, you know, many of us in here, there's things that are being ignited that the Lord is actually doing. So I'm so excited about the theme of the year, so excited about the open door into His grace. I mean, people go, oh, yeah, of course, was always the open door. Well, not always for a lot of people. I'm not talking about here. But if you're actually under law, there are no open doors. If you think about it, if you read the book of Romans. So we're actually living in heavenly places. When you're born of the Spirit, you're living in heavenly places. So what's going to happen this year, because we are living in heavenly places, we're going to have heavenly perspective. Our perspective is going to be from the heavenly places, which is a scripture that the Lord gave us in Revelations 4, verse 1. So I'm just going over this again because faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing, and each time it, it gets embedded stronger and stronger and stronger, and the manifestation takes place and we can walk it out in our life. So very, very um, parallel with some other people, some other preachers, it's almost like saying the same thing but from a different direction. So this is the heavenly place where we find John. When we're talking about the Word of God prophetically, we're also talking about us because the Word of God has about three, there may be even more than that, different layers. Some people say the fourth, but it's like there's different layers. So if it's a prophetic word, we're seeing the pro prophecy that the Lord has for us out of the book of Revelations, which uh, is very clear. And this is talking about John on the island of Patmos, when he was in heavenly places, which is where we already are. So we're already seeing a lot of what John was seeing. So after these things are looked, perceived, so we all perceive from our spirit, and behold, what do we see in the realm of the spirit? A door standing open in heaven. There's an open door over us. There's an open window over us. Whenever you preach about the sun, God's beloved sun, there is always an open heaven over us. That's another whole message. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me saying, come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this. That's written slightly different in the Greek, but we're just going to read it as it is. I don't want to complicate things. So 
like a trumpet. The first voice which I heard was also found in Revelations 1. We're going to read. You heard a voice was like a trumpet speaking to me. So a voice was saying some things that sounded like a trumpet. The trumpet was saying, come up here and I'm going to show you things which must take place after this. In other words, when we're in heavenly places is where the Lord can begin to speak to us and begin to show us some things. So what was the voice like the trumpet saying? I will show you some things, is what the Lord is saying. I will show you some things in the heavenly places. Now, just recently, some of you may have heard this. There's people over in Israel who are actually walking around, isn't there? And they're actually hearing, like in the natural, a sound of a trumpet. And they're looking to find out where the sound is coming from. Well, it's in the spirit realm, you see. And uh, watching and just thinking, and, and the trumpet continues to make a sound. Well, there's a reason why the trumpet is actually making a sound now in the realm of the spirit. Uh, also, that the trumpet has been sounding ever since Christ was born, really. So what's happening in the spirit realm is that the trumpet is sounding and the dead will be right, will raise first. Incorruptible will put on... Sorry, corruptible will put on incorruptible. And that will be the last trumpet that we hear before the rapture of the church. So in the spirit realm, there's all kinds of things that are going on at the moment. Immortality, you know, mortal people will put on immortality. You know, all of a sudden in the twinkle of an eye, the sound of a trumpet. We're all going to hear that trumpet noise. It's actually going to be the voice of the Lord saying, come up here. So it sounds like a trumpet, it sounds like a voice of a trumpet, but it's actually um, the voice of the Lord. And in Revelations 1, remember, John speaks about the trumpet, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day, which we know when you look at the Greek and what the word is saying, the Lord's Day is referring to the first day of the week, which is Sunday, today. Today is the first day of the week. And John was saying on a Sunday, the first day of the week, I was in the Spirit. We are already actually in the Spirit right now, aren't we? And I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet. Now, what was the trumpet saying? Well, the trumpet was saying that I am the Alpha and Omega. I am the first and the last. What you see, write in a book. So what he heard, he was going to write in a book. And what the Lord was saying to John, he's about to explain and unfold a massive revelation about the church at this particular point. In other words, the Lord was saying, I am the Alpha and I am the Omega. What was he saying? What was he saying in saying who he is? He was declaring his sovereignty. In other words, what I start, I'll finish. What God starts, he will finish. How many times has he said that to us? What I start, I'll finish. Uh, The doctor's not going to have the final say in your body. The pride of man and man's unbelief and circumstances are not going to have the final say. When I start, the Lord is the Alpha. The Lord is the Omega. The Lord is the first. The Lord is the last. What he starts, he will finish in your life. Abraham, never give up. Be fully persuaded that what God has promised, you've got to know what God has promised, and God is able to perform. So that's what the Lord is doing in your body, in your life, and in this place, and in this church. And then John, on the Lord's Day, on Sunday, John turned to see the voice that spoke to him. And of course, when he turned, he actually saw. Instead of seeing the voice, whose whose voice was sounding like a trumpet, the trumpet was actually showing him something. Whenever there's a heralding sound of a trumpet, the Lord's about to show you something. Something's about to release, like Gideon, when they blew the trumpet. What happened was, it was a declaration of the Lord's finished work. What happened? Because that was blasted, the declaration through the ram's horn, the enemy turned on one another. And the victory was theirs, because Christ was being proclaimed. Then he turned and saw the seven golden lampstands, the seven churches, and the Lord was saying to him, who's in the midst of the seven golden lampstands? Well, we know, we've read that uh, in the midst of the seven lampstands was one like the Son of Man. So you could actually think about that and what the trumpet was saying to John, how he saw the Lord standing in the midst of the candlesticks. 
And, you know, he was showing John who it is that's in the midst of the churches. So you kind of can see that the Lord is the physical presence here on earth in the church, isn't he? Because that's what John saw. The church is the physical presence of Christ in the house today on his day. That's what the Lord was saying. The seven church representative of the churches that are here today. And there in the midst was one like the Son of Man. And that's what John saw. He saw the Son of Man. See, when you're in the Spirit, you'll see the Son of Man in the midst. You'll have a fresh revelation. There's more people this year, I believe, are going to have a fresh revelation of Jesus than what they've ever done in any other years put together. So it's like God is revealing His Son once again in the house because that's a prophetic uh, word that the Lord was saying to us through the open door into His grace. Once you start catching uh, more of what the Spirit of God is saying, it doesn't have to be taught as much. I still seem to be doing teaching, but there's times where I feel that things will actually really be caught more so that we don't have to try to grab everything with our mind. We can catch it with our spirit. Then our spirit can educate our mind later on. Is the best way. (laughs) The Lord's Day, you know, John had a revelation of the church on the Lord's Day, had a revelation of the Lord standing in the midst. On the Lord's Day, as we heard, I think probably a couple of weeks ago, on the Lord's Day, Thomas wasn't there. He wasn't there when the disciples were there in John 20, verse 24. Now, Thomas, called the twin, one of the 12, was not with them, the disciples, that is, uh, when Jesus came. Gee, how would you feel? (laughs) Jesus has come to, you know, visit us in here today, and you weren't here that day. (laughs) Verse 25, the other disciples therefore said to him, they made sure he knew, oh, we've seen the Lord. Well, we know what happened after that. Thomas still actually didn't believe until then the Lord had to reappear. But the best way is to actually be where the Lord is going to be. Be led by His Spirit so you actually are in the right time and you're in the right place. And it was on the Lord's day the Lord reminded me 15 years ago or something when I had a fresh revelation of the Lord and saw His grace that I had never ever seen before ever in my Christian walk. It was on the Lord's day. It happened in his house, the Lord's house, on his day. So it's very profound. I feel what the Lord is saying through um, prophetically what he's saying to the churches, I feel, right around the world. And there's, you know, there's preachers who'll be saying the same thing. Revelations 4 verse 1. The Lord said, come up here and I will show you things which must take place. Now listen to this. Come up here. And I will show you things which must take place. See, it's not just knowing we already are living in heavenly places. It's being established in being in heavenly places, which is why you catch it. You know, it's understanding that's the realm because we already are in the spirit. We already are seeing the Lord in our spirit because that's the place and the platform that we actually already live from because we are spiritual beings. You know, we're comfortable with what the Lord is saying to us. One of the greatest blessings in my life when I first became a Christian over 40 years ago was to actually hear the Lord. I just thought that was the most amazing thing in my whole entire life because I'd never heard the Lord before I was saved. I mean, of course, He might have been saying things here or there, but I'd never uh, acknowledged or I never had the revelation. So it's not just knowing that you're in heavenly places. It's actually being established in heavenly places in what the Lord is saying. He's wanting to establish us, which is setting us up for him to be able to say some things to us, isn't it? So when you see from that perspective, the whole world looks completely different living from heavenly places. When I first got saved, my whole world changed. Everything looked completely different to the way it was just the day before. After I got saved, it was like everything was brighter. Everything was, I was just like in a peace. It was like, it was just completely different. So what the Lord's saying is in verse 2 of Revelations, going back to Revelations 4 verse 2, immediately I was in the Spirit. And behold, when you're in the Spirit, as we said last couple of weeks, a throne set in heaven and one sat on the throne. Isn't that amazing? 
So when you're under grace, when your eyes are on Jesus, your spirit will be activated to see all kinds of things. Your spirit will be activated automatically. Faith will be activated automatically because you'll be seeing the Lord. So I always say to people with regards to healing or circumstances or things in their life, go into a deeper rest, into a deeper place with the Lord and the rest will take place. Start worshipping the Lord, spending time with the Lord and giving Him thanks. You know, thank Him for everything He's done. Thank the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Who forgives all of our iniquities, who heals all of our diseases. Okay, so just going on as well in Ephesians 2 verse 4, what we sort of shared last week. But God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even verse 5, when we were dead in our sins, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. So here we go, seated, how far above are we? Ephesians chapter 1 verse 21, far above all principalities. How many? All. That's how far above. The invisible demonic hierarchy, principalities and powers and might and dominion, whatever the devil tries to do, whether it be sickness, lack, disease, um, grief, pain, sorrow, disappointment, we are far above all of that. Now, when you're established in this, your healing is really easy to flow in. And listen carefully. Far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name, every name, uh, sick, sickness and all kinds of sickness, every name that is named, not only now in this age, but in that which is to come. We are far above anything, anything that's malfunctioning in our life, we are far above it all. Anywhere where we've fallen short, we are far above it, and it's actually under our feet. Because he put all things, how many things? All things under his feet, and gave him to be head over all things to the church. He is the head of the church. He is out yours and my head. Verse 23, which is his body, that's us. We are the fullness of him who who fills all in all. We are his body and under our feet and also under his feet, he puts everything because as we are in him, he's in us and vice versa. All things. He's given us all power and all authority to tread on, which means to sting, like to tread on. It means to crush and annihilate. He gives us all power and authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all, how much power of the enemy? Over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt you pain, discomfort, nothing will hurt you. Time to be established in our heavenly places, use our authority and know who we are in Christ and start acting like we are one, Christ and you, Christ and me. We are one. We are raised up together. There's resurrection life on the inside of us. See, I love all of these truths. This is what I cut my teeth on. You know, in the early, early days, this is like how I grew up. was so uh, full of faith and understanding of what the Lord is saying in these areas. So rise above our problems when we understand and establish we're in heavenly places, have a heavenly perspective. So as we said last week, and also I heard as well, you can actually um, disassociate yourself from your problem. Remember how we've talked about this years ago? I did this once again when I was first saved. It was by the Holy Spirit training me. He used to say, that's not you anymore. You know, I had certain uh, habits. He said to me when I was actually, you know, drinking a beer in a pub, he said, and and cigarettes, etc. He said, that wasn't me anymore. Now, for me, that was my revelation. You'll have your own for whatever God has for you. But then I learned to disassociate myself from that person. I realized that that actually wasn't me anymore by the Spirit of God, not out of my smarts, because I didn't actually know anything much in those days. But it's like you can do that. You can disassociate yourself, I've got here, from anger, sickness, or lack, because it's below. So listen, so we live from heaven to earth. We do not live from earth to heaven. We live in the spirit realm So we live out of supply, 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 
so we know where we're seated, don't we? We don't try to go higher because it means that we're not there. So when the Lord was saying to John, come up high, it was just using an analogy that this is where I have you to see in my realm. We're already in that realm. We're already in the spirit realm. So it's not like we've always got to go up higher. It means that we're already there. We're actually appropriating where we already are. Because if we don't understand that we're already there, then our prayers will be like a distance to God. No, we, we are there with God in the throne room of grace. If Jesus is there also. He's our representative. So therefore, we're not going to live our life which is a real uh, thing. I learned this from Brother Hagen as well in the early days. I'm not going to live my life trying to be kind, trying to be nice. People used to say to me, try to love. Try to love a bit more. Try to be patient, you know, a bit more patient. No, I'm not going to overcome bad habits by trying because I'm just going to be repeating them. Tell me to try to do something, I'm going to repeat because I don't have the power in and of ourselves. No, I live my life seated in heavenly high places where I'm actually free from that trouble because I've disassociated myself with that because it's not actually who I am. I'm a new creation in Christ. All things have passed away and all things have become new. So that's just how it is in my household with me. I've settled that a long time ago. I've settled that in myself. So this is how it plays out, because I just heard something recently about our identity in Christ. Today, God sees us in Christ. Now, someone said, no, this is what they said, no, God sees you. And I know what they're saying, but God sees you in Christ, not apart from Christ. You'd be surprised who says what. God sees you. Now, I had someone say that to me many years ago as well um, when I used to speak like this. They'd say, no, God sees you. And I'm thinking, oh, oh, gosh, I don't want the Lord to actually see me the way I am in my fallen state. No, God sees you. No, what it is under his grace is that God sees Christ in you, not apart from you. You can't separate you from Christ. He was buried. He rose again and we rose in him. In him. We rose in him. So we are in the resurrected Christ. And when we understand this, the truth will set us free from the strongholds that try to cripple us in this life. See, I did not want fear in my life. And I tell you what, I was tenacious, like that tenacious, how I said it. I was not going to allow fear to come into my life. Who do you think you are, you foul spirit of fear entering into my life? I refuse you. You are not a part of me. You do not belong to me. And I will not accept you in my life. That's just how I was. And I went to town in the scriptures. Thank you, Lord, that the, uh, the righteous are bold as a lion, fearless, daring, courageous, etc. You know the testimony. See, we're seated together at the right hand of God. All those things are far below. Every name that is named, fear, lack is far below. And it will not touch my life in Jesus' name. So this is really what we're saying in here today, found in Colossians 3, 1. This is what the Lord spoke to me about to say to you in here today, Colossians 3, verse 1. Uh, I didn't actually think of this scripture, but when he said, I thought that was a really good thing, Lord, to actually say here in here today. This is what we need to be establishing and rest in our posture in heavenly places of who we are. Now, this is how we do it. Colossians 3, verse 1. If you then were raised with Christ which Paul acknowledges, we're raised with Christ. Seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Seek those, the word seek is an interesting Greek word, desire, inquire, worship. When you seek, you're actually inquiring. David inquired of the Lord in the Old Testament. Lord, do you want us to go into the battle and fight this way? And the Lord said, no, you're not going to fight this way. This time you go up, remember I say this scripture all the time, round, behind, at the back, when you hear the sound of the marching in the mulberry trees, then you'll go and you'll defeat them all. And they'll have three days plundering all the goods after that. So it's like, that's how you 
If you are raised with Christ, which we are, seek those things which are above where Christ sits at the right hand of God. Set, verse 2, this is us. Set, 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 set means to exercise your mind, insert oneself, accept your affections, be of the same mind on things above. Set your mind on things above and not things on the earth, which is really easily to do. It's easy to do. Set your mind on the Lord. Just tell him how wonderful he is, and all of a sudden you'll start falling in love with him all over again because he actually is wonderful. He actually is uh, gracious to us. Now, if it wasn't for the Lord, we'd probably be dead. So this is a scripture that I say in, uh, that I've said personally with this scripture, set my mind on things above. I immediately within myself would go to Isaiah 26.3 and I would say this out of my mouth like this, God will keep me in perfect and constant peace whose mind is stayed on him, set on him because I trust in him. Now you wanna meditate on anything? You meditate on that. You mutter and you go over and over and over that till that word becomes a part of you like your right arm. The word becomes manifest, becomes flesh in your life. And then I would also think about setting my mind on the Lord would remind me of Philippians uh, uh, chapter 4 verse 6. Uh, I rehearsed Philippians and almost could recall the whole book of Philippians. I loved it so much without actually reading it. I just memorized it. Because in Philippians, it talks about how don't have a divided mind, to, that divides your mind from the Word of God. And he would say, be, Philippians says, be anxious for nothing. In other words, don't be anxious. Don't take a thought. Don't be distracted. Do not be anxious for nothing. He didn't say be anxious in everything. He said, be anxious for nothing. Don't take thought for anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Now, once you've given it to the Lord, you've cast all your care, you've left it there, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding in your mind, will guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. His perfect and constant peace. And I will confess, Lord, and I still do, Lord, I thank you. I'm in your perfect and constant peace. Constant, constant. And I would say it like that, you know, before I go to bed at night. Lord, I thank you that you will keep me in your perfect and constant peace because my mind is stayed on you. So it would set my position to be in heavenly places. It would set my understanding, not to actually get there, I'm already there, but it would give me an understanding. And then I could start flowing in the things of the Spirit uh, easier in my life. Colossians 3 verse 2, set your mind, going back Colossians 3 verse 2, what we just read on things above, not things on the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. If you want to know your plans for this year, they're hidden in Christ. So you have to set your mind on Christ to know what they are, because the old man is dead. Where is our life? Hidden in Christ. Means concealed or kept secret. But when we fellowship with the Lord, he will reveal to us what he's saying. You will find your life in Christ. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will appear with him in glory. I Many he's talking about the rapture. Uh, well, it could be talking about three different layers, actually. And then when I read that, when Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. I realized, without realizing, that Christ is my life. That's where the word is. <laughs> See, I had a revelation. The Lord showed me uh, eating bread. This is many years ago, remember? Like the angel, one foot on the sea, one foot on the land, presented a little book to John. He ate the book. It was in his mouth, uh, sweet in his belly, bitter in his proper soul. In other words, it was an impartation. And out of that impartation many years ago, this is going back quite a bit, the Lord said, the, the, like bread, it felt like a bread that I ate. And then came, from that bread came the words, Christ is my life. But I didn't actually realize until this week Ah, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Christ is my life, actually, in the Scriptures. So I was just really thank the Lord for that. How are you all going? Are you good? You're all right? You can still lock in. 
perfect because you get you're locked in by your spirit do you know you can sit there for seven to 14 hours or to midnight as paul spoke and not fall out of the window and still be hearing the revelation of god's word like sharp because your spirit's so hungry your spirit's in tune. Anyway, we've got about another five minutes and then we'll just finish off. So I just want to share this last little portion with you because I can go through this probably a little bit quicker. Therefore, put to death, he's talking about, because our mind's on the Lord, put to death your members. In other words, put to death the deeds of the flesh is what he's saying. Those things on the earth, you know, all that stuff in the flesh, evil desires, etc. That Put to death the deeds of the flesh, says in Romans, and you will live. Because the flesh... Uh, is very needy. You let the flesh have its way, it is extremely needy. The flesh needs to be recognized. You know, the flesh wants all these things because it all stems from not having a close relationship with the Lord. It's like, you know, you when you're content, then you know, well, hang on a minute, the Lord recognizes me and he is my sufficiency. You know, you're wanting the Lord to open doors for you. So you think, well, if I get to know so-and-so, then such and such will be open to me. Now, this is what I was like in the early days because I wasn't content at the beginning. I thought, if I can just get into the office and see prophet so-and-so who's in there, maybe he can see this amazing call that's on my life. (laughs) And that day I never got into the office. And I thought, goodness sakes, people need to open their eyes and see. <laughs> so it's like that. I said, don't they know what's on my life? Can't they see what's on my life? I mean, surely there would be somebody in here who could see something. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, I know, wear your bright jacket to be seen. That was a thing that we did in those days. The prophets come to town. What jacket we'd say you wearing? I'm going to wear my bright red one. What are you going to wear? Oh, let's go and buy one so that we can actually, oh, there they are standing out in the crowds. Oh, let's get a prophetic word, shall we? Because <laughs> our confidence wasn't in the Lord in the early days because that's actually how we were trained up because if you weren't in the fivefold, you're just not going to make it in life. You know, isn't it? That's what the days that we cut our teeth at. If you weren't one of the apostles, prophets, pastors, particularly apostles and prophets, you really made it if you're an apostle and a prophet. Well, I'm not being disrespectful to the gifts, but the Lord loves us all, no matter who we are. (laughs) And see, the flesh starts arcing up, a bit like what Pastor Prince was saying about Peter when the Lord was going to wash his feet. No, 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 don't wash my feet. And the Lord says, if I don't wash your feet, you have no part of me. In other words, if I don't wash the contamination of the world's way of thinking off your feet, you're not going to know how to flow in the rhythm of my grace. I will wash my head and my hands also. So the flesh is either, you know, all in or not at all, non-compliant. It's like we can't be, you know, we're not going to be in sync with the gospel of grace if our flesh is still arcing up. If you actually, as I said to you before, if you have one bar of chocolate, well, this is what I found myself, (laughs) then all of a sudden you want another one. Oh, it's better off not to eat that. Instead of buying a box of ice creams, and having one each day, now I've got no ice creams left in my box. (laughs) And his hasn't touched his box (laughs) of ice creams. And that was yesterday. (laughs) So that's what I'm saying, we're all the same. You know, you have to, you've got to tell your flesh. Paul said it this way in the Greek. He said, I beat my body black and blue. Now, I'm not saying that in domestic violence or anything like that. I'm saying within yourself to keep the flesh down. Now, you might have a problem. You say, oh, that's not me. Or you might have a problem with gossip. Might have a long tongue, you know. And in the, under the law, if there were things that were preventing you, you'd have to chop it off. Chop your tongue off. Well, we don't do that now. I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> I'm just saying in Galatians 5 verse 18, but if we are led by the Spirit, we are not under the law. If we are led by the Spirit, we are not under the law. We do not let our flesh dictate to to us. The flesh is saying, no, you don't need to go to church. You can be rest assured you need to be going to church. And the Lord's saying, all those out in live streaming said, amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. So finally, you guys can come up now if we're finishing off. Finally, 
the Lord says this. This is about the river, the Spirit of God that flows through us. You know, like I said, to be led by the Spirit. God is constantly supplying the Spirit to us in Galatians 3, 5. He's constantly working miracles towards us. You know, by the hearing of faith, the Spirit of God is constantly flowing to us and through us, constantly working miracles to us. John 15 verse 5 actually shows a demonstration of the vine and the branch. There's a constant flow of the sap, of the Spirit, in other words, of life, constantly flowing through us. You know, as we abide in the vine, the vine is in the branch, the fruit's going to grow automatically which is where the Ezekiel scripture comes from, wherever the river goes, because we're constantly in that supply, we're constantly being led by the Spirit, wherever the river goes, it says in Ezekiel uh, 42 verse 12, there is life. Because of the waters that flows from the Lord, uh, the fruit will be for food and the leaves for healing of the nations. It'll happen just automatically. And... And I, I just love the fact that the Lord is going to produce a lot of fruit in us this year. And this was what, what came in my spirit. Real lasting fruit comes when the Lord provides an inside out transformation. Lasting fruit of the spirit because we're abiding in heavenly places. We're abiding in the vine. The vine is in the branch. The branch is in the vine. So this is one of those uh, today, I feel that if you download any of the message, I feel this is probably a good one to get. I feel there's some truths in here that we need to hear over and over and over and over and over. Uh, it's not good enough just to hear something once. The Word of God says when we meditate on the Word day and night, day and night, day and night, then you shall make your way prosperous and then you shall have good success. Oh, how come I'm not prospering having good success? Well, you need to meditate on the Word, not once a week, but you need to meditate on God's gospel, on Christ and His finished work, day and night, day and night. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing a fresh revelation of Christ every day, every day. And uh, all that stuff will just drop off, that needs to drop off. There's stuff that is there that we don't even know is there that needs to drop off. That'll just drop off as you are living in heavenly places, relating with the Lord. All of a sudden, the flesh will quieten down, quieten down, quieten down. And your spirit man will rise up. You'll be flying and being led by the things of the spirit. That's why we never, ever pray to the Lord in those times when the flesh is arcing up. We're being troubled. Our mind's in distress. We're looking at things in the natural. We're seeing things. No, no, that's not the time. The time is go and worship the Lord and thank the Lord for everything. Start flowing in the things of the Spirit and say, okay, Lord, what are you saying and how do you see things, Lord, from that perspective? Because it can change just like that. The four lepers went into the city. Uh, they thought they were going to die. They might as well die full of food, went into the city. And what was there? Like food, garments, there were weapons, and they had a feast. From one day, famine to the next to a feast. You see that all through God's Word. So let's not underestimate what the Lord can do in your life or in anyone else's life. Lord, we just thank you in here today. How great you are, Jesus. You are a miracle working God indeed. Lord, we have more confidence in you this year to get the job done. We have more confidence in, Lord, believing that your promises in our life is what's coming to pass. As Abraham was fully persuaded that what you had promised, that you, Lord, are able to perform. Lord, let us not grow weary in here in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. I pray, Lord, for an infusion of strength in every single person here today. Those words, the dreams, the vision, the promise in your word that you've shown different people at various different stages in their life, Lord, I just thank you would be ignited as Haggai talks about and stirred up on the inside, that they be awakened by what you've shared, maybe even when they were first, people were first saved. Lord, I just thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord, that time is so short. There is no time or distance in the Spirit, but Lord, it's like there is a ramping up. And when the disciples invited you into the boat, immediately they were to the other side. When we invite you into our situation, Lord, we know that we can be where you want us to be, in your right time and right place. 
So Lord, I just thank you. Let everything come alive on the inside. As we said, those of the spirit, the, the promises and the word, Lord, the revelation, Lord, let it come alive. So electric this year, Lord, that that life would quicken and energize people's minds, people's mortal bodies, Lord. I thank you as we live with you in heavenly high places. Woo, the view is so good. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we love talking to you. You're the best. You're always encouraging. You're always positive. You're always believing. You're always saying to us that all things are possible to those who believe. Everything is possible in you, Lord. We just thank you, Jesus. Let us be encouraged in here today. Let us start talking your talk. Let us talk the currency of heaven, faith, believing, Lord, that you can do it. We believe that you can do it. To the two blind men, you said you believe that I can do it. Not do you believe you, for your healing that you can actually do it. No, do you believe I can heal? Do you believe I? Yes, Lord, we believe that you can do it because you've already done it and you'll do it again. We just thank you, Lord. Thank you for bodies just so in tune with the Spirit, Lord, and our minds, Lord, that they just flow in the rhythm of your grace, in your presence. Lord, I thank you for that. Thank you, Lord, as we also bring... Uh, our tithe and our offering. We thank you, Lord, that you receive what we have. Lord, that you're the one that has blessed us. You're the one that's opened the double doors to us. You're the one that's given us favor, Lord. So much favor coming on the body of Christ this year. So much favor. I can see it in my spirit, Lord. I just thank you, Lord, that, Father, as we place our tithe and our offering in your hands, we just thank you, Lord. We just see increase in every person's life financially. We just see, Lord, a greater manifestation of finances happening in people's lives. And Lord, we just want to thank you for the opportunity to worship you today with the tithe and the offering. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. There's just something alive in that area. It's always alive when you worship the Lord. But uh, the Lord was showing me a scripture in Nehemiah about Tobia. Tobiah, is it? Tobia? I think it's Tobia. Tobias? No, it's not Tobias. <laughs> See, listen to the Lord, not listen to man. But anyway, uh, I'm going to, when the Lord gives me the green light, I feel it will be this year sometime that um, the Lord's really on, on finances because it's like it takes finances for us to live. <laughs> and He wants us to live with um, houses that we didn't build, vineyards that we didn't dig. You know, wells that we didn't dig, sorry, vineyards that we didn't plant. That's, that's our Lord. And uh, is he doing it? Yes. Started doing it in quite a few of our lives in here at the end of last year, and he's still going. So, Lord, we just thank you and I pray for everyone as we go, Lord. And anyone who hasn't accepted the Lord on live streaming, we just want to give them an opportunity to, to pray, even where they are at home. And you accept the Lord into your heart by asking Jesus. You say, Jesus come into my heart. Thank you, Lord, for blessing me with eternal life in Jesus' name. See, it's acknowledging the Lord and He comes into your life. It's inviting Him in and uh, He comes in. He's there waiting all the time anyhow. And Lord, I just thank you this week as we go. What a powerful week. Lord, I pray that the people uh, in this church would rise to the place that you have for us this week and every other week, but we're just talking about this is the first day of the week. I pray, Lord, there's anointing, fresh oil on us for this week, fresh oil on us, Lord, to go forth. And whatever we set our hand to this week prospers for the rest of the year, Lord, but we're talking about the fresh oil from this week. And I just thank you, Lord, there'll be a fresh revelation of you, Jesus. Pray, Lord, that people are in so in tune with their spirit man. Lord, their spirit man is just driving out anything that shouldn't be there in our life. For all of us, Lord, that you would strengthen us with might by the spirit in the inner man. Lord, that we walk from the inside out. We're a thousand times bigger on the inside than what we are on the outside. Lord, I just pray a great blessing upon each and every one as we go. Your protection over us, over our families, over our finances. Lord, I just thank you. No evil comes near us, no plague nigh our dwelling, for you give your angels charge over us to keep us in all of our ways. 
lest we dash our foot against a stone. Lord, I pray the theme of the year, the double doors, Lord, be open, an open door into your grace, to your supply, and all that you have for us. And we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Have a fantastic week.